Hello, my name is Gannon Jones Griffiths and I'm the lead ambassador for the Engaged Change Project and these are the questions for the party leaders. Question number one. Self-advocacy is under threat across Wales because of a lack of clarity in independent professional advocacy contracts as part of the Social Services and Well being Wales Act. It doesn't adequately distinguish the difference between advocacy and self-advocacy. Without self-advocacy, people with learning disabilities will not have the skills to speak up for themselves, meaning they would depend on others to speak for them. If elected, what commitment will you give to safeguarding the right of people with learning disabilities to be able to speak for themselves and to have voice, choice and control over the decisions that affect their lives? The purpose of advocacy services is to make sure that people who otherwise might struggle to get their voice heard to be able to articulate for themselves the things that matter the most to them. But there's always more that we can do together to make sure that advocacy services for people with learning disabilities are improved and allow them to have their voice heard on their own behalf. The next Welsh Labour Government will work with users, services and groups representing people with learning disabilities to see what more can be done to strengthen those services, the rights of people, based always on their own experiences. We in Play Cymru believe that people with learning disabilities are the people who are best placed to make decisions over their own lives. So what we would want to do above and beyond everything else is to make sure that people with learning disabilities have agency, that they're able, able to advocate for their own position and their own needs. We would support the view that or education and awareness training in the general population need to play a part in this, but we should be putting resources in to help people with learning disabilities to be able to live full lives and not see their services cut as is happening so frequently at the moment. Uh, well, not just because of the pandemic, but obviously that is making things worse as the question alluded to. Uh, so I think that people with learning disabilities should be at the forefront of all policy formation as well in this field, because we shouldn't be determining this without talking to people who actually have learning disabilities. I'm really pleased to respond to the series of questions that people with learning disabilities have submitted to me for a response. And I can say our manifesto is full of ideas to help people with learning disabilities reach their full potential in Wales. From investing 5,000 teachers in our schools to developing respite care for carers and ultimately creating an economy that creates 65,000 new jobs and 150,000 apprenticeships. It's really important that no one feels left behind and after 22 years of labour and 12 months of the worst crisis any of us can remember, we have a new government on May the 6th, a government that delivers for everyone and ultimately delivers a new Wales with new opportunities. So I hope that by reading our manifesto, those with learning disabilities and people who support them will have confidence that the Welsh Conservatives are on your side delivering for you. What plans do you have to ensure that disabled people are not impacted unfairly as a result of Brexit? And how do you plan to ensure that people with learning disabilities are able to live as equal and active citizens as promoted in key legislation, such as the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. The Welsh Labour Government has, throughout the Brexit process, been as clear as we could be that leaving the European Union should never be an excuse for reducing the rights that people in Wales have to participate in our country, to create a more equal Wales, to use the social model of disability, which recognises the need for society to change so that learning disabled people can participate fully in all aspects of Welsh life. The next Welsh Labour Government will put the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Disabled People into Welsh law. Building on everything we have done through the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act to make sure that learning disabled people have the same rights and opportunities as other citizens here in Wales. 
Plaid Cymru uh, has warned, well, since 2016 about how a hard Brexit would have a devastating impact on equalities law, on equalities provision in the UK. We, we uh, recognise totally that these rights have been very hard fought for and that they need to be upheld. We would want to enshrine the rights of disabled people in Wales uh, and allow people with learning disabilities, people to, to, to take action when their rights have been infringed upon we would make sure that those uh, the, those uh, protections are enshrined in law by seeking the full devolution of the equality act uh, we would also want to see all welfare powers devolved and not just the administration of welfare just so that we can have a more compassionate system uh, than is currently in the uk that has been propagated by successive governments uh, i'm afraid well in westminster but i'm afraid that the welsh government has not done enough uh, to demand these powers being devolved to Wales. So I think that there, there are lots of things that need to be devolved. We would also set up a cabinet minister post uh, for equalities and women's empowerment that would seek to make sure that, again, uh, the rights of people with learning disabilities and so many other protected characteristics would be upheld. And again, proffering that agency to people so that this is something that has <sighs> prominence in the cabinet that it is a cabinet level post so those are some of the things that we would do to try and alleviate that but i i totally understand that this is a, a something which is really concerning for people in the learning disabilities community during covid19 or coronavirus people with disabilities were impacted more profoundly than the general population amongst people with disabilities people with learning disabilities were impacted on the most. COVID-19 did not cause the inequalities, it just ex exacerbated the inequalities that were already there. If elected, how would you make sure that these social injustices are eliminated in post-COVID times? Just before the start of the election campaign, I met a group of disabled people who have written a report about their experiences of the pandemic here in Wales and how it has affected them and other people. I said at that meeting that the government will work with the group to make sure the pandemic does not make the needs of learning disabled people worse as a result of that experience. Welsh Labour has already committed special funding to help people into work and training as we recover from COVID, helping people to start their own businesses and to employ people with different needs and abilities. As we recover from the global pandemic, we want to create a stronger, greener, fairer Wales in which everybody has a part to play, when nobody is left behind and when nobody is held back. I had pushed alongside so many of you, I pushed in the Senedd for people with learning disabilities living in care homes to be prioritised for the COVID vaccine. Thank goodness the Welsh Government were persuaded to act on that and I'm so glad to have played a small part in that but it was down to the dedicated campaigning of so many people with learning disabilities, people who had family members who were being affected by this. We need to learn these lessons that came about in, during the pandemic, as is clear from the question, this is actually something that ah, the pandemic has exposed the inequalities that are baked into our society. So alongside what I've already said about how we would actually create a cabinet uh, member post uh, in order to make sure that this isn't dealt with in a siloed way, that actually we would be making sure that every government decision had someone in the cabinet there uh, making sure that actually we had to take this uh, into account in all government decisions uh, and as i've already said in response to the earlier question as well we would be seeking the full devolution of welfare powers again to have a more compassionate system and full devolution of the equality act to enshrine the rights of people with learning disabilities in Welsh law. I think that anything short of that just isn't going to go far enough. I mean, we can't just treat the symptoms of inequality. We have to get to the root causes of why these are in our society. And it's only by having those powers in Wales that we'll be able to actually fully tackle it. 
In your manifesto, you have pledged a huge emphasis on employment, with only 6% of the learning disability population in Wales in paid employment. Will you ensure that you roll out a national job coach model in order to ensure the support that people need to be able to work is available and that people with learning disability are not left behind when the jobs are rolled out? Welsh Labour is committed to reducing the number of people with a learning disability who are out of work here in Wales. The Welsh Labour Government has already created a network of disabled people's employment champions. They work with businesses to support more disabled people into work and to speak up for the rights of disabled people in the workplace. Our employability plan shows how we will help more people with a learning disability into work here in Wales in the future. We have uh, put forward a number of policies about how we would want to encourage employers to provide um, a sheltered program for anyone who needs more support when either going back to work after COVID or going into a new office environment. Uh, we. I, I, yeah, in terms of what the question's asking about here about job coaching, I think that that's something where, where we'd like to see um, we'd like to see some more about that. Actually, I think that that's a really intriguing idea, and I would certainly, uh, I, I certainly instinctively would like uh, to see that happening. Um, there are lots of things that we I think that we need to do in in terms of um, making sure that office spaces um, that they that people aren't encouraged to only have to go into to work in the way that people thought you had to go into the office before. I think that we need to encourage employers to be more uh, willing to accept maybe remote working or agile working. We need, again, I don't think we can have a one-size-fits-all approach, but yeah, this idea of job coaching for this, I, I think that's a really good idea. I'm Dot Gallagher and I'm a parent of two sons with learning disabilities and I'm asking these questions on behalf of myself and other carers. What recovery roadmap would you put in place for family carers and their relatives in Wales to make their lives better and ensure they do not get left behind? Brilliant. Paid carers have understandably been seen as a priority over the last 12 months, but unpaid family carers have also been caring, but without breaks. What steps will you take to ensure tired and isolated family carers can have a break? And how will you ensure respite is available for the long term? Unpaid carers provide really valuable support. And I know that this can be a difficult job, especially over the last year. Here in Wales, we really value our unpaid carers. They do such great work right across Welsh communities. We've run a campaign to raise awareness of carers' rights and launched a new national carers plan to get better services for our carers. We also fund three major charities for carers and those charities provide grants and support hardship claims. The next Welsh Labour Government will improve training opportunities so that they can continue caring with confidence. And in our manifesto, we commit to a one million COVID fund for carers here in Wales and three million pounds to improve respite care, breaks for carers that allow them to go on carrying out the invaluable service that they provide to families and communities here in Wales. The COVID-19 pandemic has stretched local services to the utmost. Uh, we have an opportunity now to rebuild after COVID. We have pushed so much in, over the past few months for more support for not just paid carers, although we're saying that they should be getting a minimum wage of at least £10 an hour, but also that there should be more recognition of the amazing work that unpaid carers do as well in our society. And I think that's something that's come out in the pandemic. We pushed for the £500 bonus payment to also be made available to unpaid carers. There is 
they, and there should be a register. We should be able to know who these amazing people are in our society so that they can get the recognition and the reward that they deserve for the selfless work that they are doing. So we would also want to replace the carer's allowance with a universal carer's income. Uh, again, as I've said, we want to full, call for the full devolution of the welfare system so that we could set up a more fair, just again, compassionate system. We need to do so much more to help these heroes, everyday heroes in our society. Respite services, we agree that additional provision for appropriate respite services needs to be made available as a priority by the next Welsh Government and we would commit to working with carers organisations to develop that further. Although some family carers receive carers allowance, myself and many more do not. And so provide many hours of unpaid care and in doing so we feel undervalued and ignored. Our care packages are arranged by social services and our family members have to financially contribute. What plans do you have to reform social care or integrate social care with health so that it will become free at the point of delivery? Over the last five years, Labour has taken action to lower the cost of care, putting a maximum cap on the cost of care provided in people's home and raising the capital limit, the amount people can keep when they enter residential care. We have continued to invest in the Integrated Care Fund, which brings health, care and housing services together. And the next Welsh Labour Government is committed to building a new generation of 21st century surgeries, bringing vital services together in the community, close to where people live and under one roof. We will also create the post of a Chief Social Care Officer for Wales to bring national leadership to the care profession, using the new national framework that we have developed to improve conditions for the social care workforce. And we will give our fantastic care staff, who have helped us all through this awful pandemic, a fair deal at work, guaranteeing them the real living wage. We are fully committed to an integrated health and social care system. We believe that uh, care workers should have parity of pay, but also conditions as people working in the NHS. We would we believe that uh, care services should be free at the point of need and that that should be fully integrated. That's one of our key manifesto pledges for this election. The, the COVID-19 pandemic has shown us what jobs in society actually keep our society running. Care workers do an often selfless, an often undervalued job. We need to value them better. The best way of doing that is making sure that there's parity of pay and conditions across health and social care and that we have an integrated health and social care service. We should not be expecting people to pay for care when that is something which, I'm sorry, it, it's something which should just be made available in a civilised society.